After listening to this story, stay tuned for a preview of another episode of American Memories Continued. As new dreams are born and hopes are lived, so too are American Memories Continued. American Memories Continued, an original audio series, is brought to you with love and commercial free by the Fingerprint Community Global, moved by greater to believe bigger. Advocatus Ecclesiae Publishing, perfecting the distribution of hope. And by the ongoing monthly support of friends, community members, and sustaining faithful partners like you. Our theme music, Proudly Western, was composed and performed by Jay Mann at www. Dot our music box dot com. We're thankful and humbled that you've chosen to tune in regularly for your favorite episodes of American Memories Continued. Not just stories told, memories lived. Today's episode is entitled Give Me Some Credit. Let all of your cares go for just a little while. Listen closely. Prepare your heart to be stolen. You now have a front row seat, and this is family time. American Memories Continued begins now. Everything changes, and it's time to get real when you're seeking to find out if you can qualify for your first car. I had washed the vehicles at the used car lot before, looking around and hoping to one day own one. But the time had come for me to get serious and to see if I could have a car of my own. Money was saved from my job and I had sacrificed to make the dream come true. Every time that you want something greater, it comes at a cost. I'd heard about this thing called credit, but I never knew that it was going to prove as important as it came to be. Saving money for a down payment is fine, and it's a big step, but a down payment alone won't buy you a car. The whole idea of credit, as I was being taught, has to do with risk or loss and how much someone can trust you to do what you've promised you will. You may be on a cloud about the gleam in your eye but someone has to look beyond the excitement to calculate what you can actually handle. Usually, what you initially want is not what you can afford. I did put aside a good sum and had been doing my homework, well to the best of my knowledge anyway, and I believed that I was ready to bust a move. Remember, this was my first car and I ate, drank, and slept the idea of driving around in style. I had taken my time window shopping during spring and summer. Now we were headed into fall and I had my eye on a few choice chariots. This was the time in my life when I first met Reverend Norton, the used car salesman who would change dealerships from time to time but would become a lifelong friend of mine. He had plenty to show me but was very interested in what I had in mind. Whatever the car, he was determined to help me get it, or as close to it as we could come. 
I was about to learn another valuable lesson, and that is that you can't always get what you want. Well, not at first anyway. There was a guy that lived across the street from me. We called him Butchie. But his real name was Eugene, which I didn't find out until years later. He was older than me, and we weren't that close. But he drove a loaded 1977 Burgundy Red Grand Prix, and he kept it spotless. I had his respect, probably because I kept my nose clean, meaning that I stayed out of trouble. Also, because he had a crush on at least two of my three sisters. And finally, because I was a neighborhood favorite of Mr. Howard, a cool older gentleman that I've talked about in other episodes, which happens to be his stepdad. <laughs> How's that for the cards being stacked in your favor? Butchie took me for a ride on occasion, which is an experience that I later did for others coming up that were younger than me. That Grand Prix rolled and handled well, and it didn't take long for me to decide that this was the car of my choice. I broke the news to Reverend Norton, and lo and behold, he had a connection with another salesman at a different car lot who had a Grand Prix. It was a different model year, but the styles hadn't changed that much. Well, not enough as to make me turn up my nose anyway. I said yes, as if that was going to be the final say. And he said, let's go take a look and see what we think. He and the other guy had an arrangement by which they could exchange cars to help each other out with sales. The color was an unusual medium pastel green and the car was almost in mint condition. No puns intended. Reverend Norton had done his work, but I was going to need a cosigner if I wanted to drive away in this beauty. I really didn't like the idea of someone else's name being on title. So I was struggling with the idea. There were other car options that would work for me, but of course, I had fallen in love with this one. Then something serious happened in our household at the time, at the same time that I was pondering what I was going to do. And a chunk of my down payment was going to be needed to help out. What horrible time! After a moment of hesitation, family is family, so I gave the money. This helped with my decision, actually. And guess what? A few weeks later, I took delivery of my new, slightly used, first car, which only two weeks before that wasn't even available. My first official car was a triple gold tan 1976 Grand Torino Braun. And I was in love all over again. Exiting the studio, please watch your step. For those who are tuned in, we now return you to your ordinary day. 
we truly hope that you've enjoyed spending this time with us. Our goal, with your help, is that the American Memories Continued Experience grows to become America's new favorite pastime, serving you and your loved ones wherever they are. What did you want to say, young lady? Go ahead. Make sure to become a fan and a supporting partner and listen to our full episodes. Click the links below and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Medium.com, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. Give American Memories Continued to yourself or to someone that you know. Thank you for listening. Thank you to our veterans for all that you've done for us. And truly, we thank you for your ongoing support. Until next time, God bless. God bless you. And now, a preview from another episode of American Memories Continued. Michigan. Well, I say neighbor when respectfully I should have said Mr. Howard, a cool older gentleman that used to say good morning to my father in an unusual way when they both came out to see about their lawns in the morning. There seemed to be some kind of unspoken competition going on between them, but truth be told, Mr. Howard's lawn looked much better than ours if memory serves me correctly. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Easy money. That was it. That was the unusual morning greeting. You see, they were both. <laughs>